on how to do this PERT exercise. The first thing that you're going to do is to download this spreadsheet as indicated by this link here. That should take you to a Dropbox folder. And what you should be able to do is once you have this open, rather than leaving it here on Dropbox, if you click the down arrow here, you can just simply download this. And I'm going to open it with Excel. So now that I have that open and I have my instructions here, I'm going to put them side by side to make it a little easier on myself. Now the reason I'm going to use this spreadsheet is it already has the formula for TE, TE in it and it should be pretty easy to uh, use for this example. What we're doing with this PERT analysis here is looking at the probability that we'll actually get done with our project on time given the optimistic, typical, and pessimistic estimates for how long our project will take. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the TE values and I could do this in another spreadsheet but I really want to do them here and that way I'll copy and paste them into Project Libre or you could also do it in Microsoft Project and we can then uh, know what the critical path is. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter all these things here. Then I'm going to enter the values. In this case, I'll just do all the optimistic ones first because I find it easier to do it that way. I'm going to come back and check my work here in a second. It's very easy to get uh, something entered incorrectly here. Oops. me right there making a mistake. Oops. Okay. I'm going to take a quick look over this and see if I see any obvious problems doesn't look like many so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and start up Project Libre and I now I want to figure out the critical path tasks so once Project Libre gets started here I'll create a new project and I'm simply going to copy and paste these values into Project Libre. I am going to do one thing here. I'm going to uh, select New at the very top and I'm going to put in a summary task. And the way I do that is after put in the word summary, I'm going to select all these things and I'm then going to go to task and I'm then going to indent all those tasks underneath it. And it'll show me how many days it's going to take. Right now it's just all one day because everything's in parallel and I haven't entered durations yet come over here to TE, I will select this, come over here, there's my durations, now I just have to enter the predecessor information, 
So I'm going to do that. There's nothing for the summary task. There's no predecessor for the first task. But then, whoops. Uh, I did that wrong. Okay, there we go. Two, 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 three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay. And it says it's going to take 122 days. Now I'd like to know what are the critical path tasks. I could certainly look at the ones that are here. And I could uh, just select those. But I can uh, look at several other views. So I can, for example, come here and filter for critical path, path tasks. And that will show me just those ones that are on the critical path. These are the ones that I want to analyze back in my spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm just going to compare these two. You notice that uh, Project Libre or Microsoft Project is not going to have the, the um, optimistic, typical, and pessimistic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete those tasks that are not on the critical path. So. Okay, and if I come down here, uh, it has summarized these uh, values here. It doesn't round them, so it says it's 121 day, days, 0.88 days, I guess. And uh, that matches what I see here in Project Libre. Now, what's interesting about the spreadsheet here is it's looking at the variance. So don't worry about the standard deviation column. In fact, we could go ahead and hide that for now because the variance is all that really matters to us. But I could enter a desired completion time. So for example, I enter 122 days. And it says we're, so there's a 50% probability that we will be complete. And that is in fact correct, because the TE values kind of lie right in the middle of that beta distribution for our optimistic, typical, and pessimistic numbers. Now what we can do is we can figure out uh, if we want a certain probability of completion, what is the time that we would need? So, for example, if I do 130 days, so I add uh, 8 days of buffer, where will that get me? Well, in this case, it gets me to 85% probability that I'll be complete. If I go to 150, I have a 99.9% .9 chance that I'll be complete. That's probably a little bit too much. And there's certainly other considerations we might want to have in here. For example, um, if there's certain tasks, for example, this program and test has a huge amount of variance on it, maybe that's where we need to put that buffer. We need to also account for the budget that would be associated with that. But this shows you a very quick example of how to do this kind of purchase.